Well, hello. Welcome to our At the Table service tonight at Western Boulevard Presbyterian Church on this, the first Sunday of August. It's great to have all of you joining us on Zoom tonight. Uh, we're welcome. And if you're watching a recording of us, welcome. Uh, know you're always welcome to join us live. Uh, if you want the Zoom link, just email me. My email is frank at wbpresbyterian.org. Um, let me just remind you a couple of things that are on our schedule wise. We've got this month, we've got a couple of services that we will be in person. Um, one of those is next Sunday. We'll have a poetry and praise service, our last one of the summer. Uh, it'll be at the church at five o'clock p.m. in the sanctuary. And the church is located at 4900 Kaplan Drive in Raleigh. Um, and then we'll have another in-person service the last Sunday of August, and that'll be our Jazz Vesper service. Um, and we're excited to have to hold that again. That also will be at five o'clock in the sanctuary on August the 25th. Um, but we'll send out reminders and keep everyone updated. But I want to make sure everyone is aware of those, those upcoming changes. And then tonight, um, being the first Sunday of the month, we will include and, and share in the Lord's Supper as a part of our worship tonight. So wherever you are in whatever way, if you wish to, you're invited to have a form of bread or juice uh, to, to share as a part of that as when we come to that point in the service. Okay, let me put up on the screen. Share sound. Oh, I'm going to need to. Give me a sec. When we have these in-person services, then I forget how to always do this as quickly as possible. There we <laughs> go. Okay, so here's our responsive call to worship. Let's join in this together. The Lord gives food in due season. God satisfies the desire of every living thing. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Give us this bread always. You have been raised with Christ, so let us seek the things that are above. Van, I'll invite you to introduce our opening song. Our praise team is singing, We Want to See Jesus Lifted High, written by Noel Richards. Awesome. Our gospel lesson tonight comes from the Gospel of John in chapter 6. I invite you to hear the reading of God's word. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, very truly I tell you. You are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. 
for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to him, what must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they went, so they said to him, what sign are you give, going to give to us? What sign are you going to give us then so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. And Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. May God add a blessing to the reading of God's word this day. Why are we here today? What leads you to come on a day when you could be resting and doing fun activities somewhere and instead be in this space for worship? Did you come of your own free will or did somebody say, we're going to church today? Are you here because you are hurting and in need of comfort? Are you here because you are grateful and you wish to express your thanks? Are you here because it looks good on your personal internal resume? What is your motivation for coming to worship today? All of us have different answers to those questions. Many times how we answer those questions changes over the course of our lifetime, depending on what's happening at that particular stage of life. We can all confess that sometimes our motivations have been self-serving, to be sure. Yes, even your own pastor will admit that he didn't always want to go to church when he was a teenager, and that included when his father was the pastor. Often our motivation for being active in the community of faith is directly tied to what spiritually nourishes and sustains us. Benjamin Sparks writes, there was a name in 19th century China for persons who came to church because they were hungry for material food. They converted, were baptized, joined the church, and remained active members as long as their physical needs were being met through the generosity of the congregation. But once their prospects improved and they and their families no longer needed rice, they drifted away from the church. Hence, missionaries called them rice Christians. The crowds that followed Jesus to Capernaum to find him after he fed the 5,000 in the wilderness are like those who see faith and church membership instrumentally as something they can choose for themselves to use for their own needs or to pursue their own interests. Christians like the Rice Christians of the 19th century are not a new problem, but are as old as the gospel itself. In this story from John's gospel, the crowds were plentiful and they were eager to find Jesus after the events that we heard and talked about last Sunday. Chapter six begins with Jesus feeding 5,000 people with five barley loaves and two fish. It's John's account of this miracle story and it causes people to respond with passion and expectation that Jesus would be their king. That crazed passion causes Jesus to flee to the mountains and later to come to his disciples by walking on the water on their, to their boat out on the sea. It is on the heels of these two miraculous acts of Jesus that our story comes, and it makes palpable the frenzy the people felt toward this prophet who is to come into the world. When the crowds find Jesus, he addresses their fervor with a little reality. You are looking for me, 
not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. The people saw in Jesus a performer, one who showed them signs, and they wanted more of the same. What sign are you going to give us then, so that we may see it and believe you? The crowds experienced the feeding of the 5,000, not as a spiritual feeding by God, but as a magic act, which shook them from their stupor. Now, they're searching for more of the same. Yet that is not what Jesus has to offer them, and he doesn't answer their question. Brian Stofferjen writes, the question Jesus answers is, why are you, namely the crowds, here? His answer to that unspoken question is, you are seeking me not because you saw signs, but because you ate from the bread and were filled. The use of the present tense for seek implies that the crowd is still seeking. A probable implication is that as long as their motives are centered in their bellies, they will never really discover Jesus. Jesus is introducing the people to new lenses through which they can view their world and their lives. The people saw Jesus' act only on the surface, what alleviated their immediate physical hunger and thirst. He wants them to see what underlies that miraculous act. It is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. It is because of God's love for creation that he sent his Son into the world. It was not to perform magic and to stir amazement and wonder on the surface of our lives. It was to stir in the core of our being a deep sense of gratitude and yearning to feed on God's love in Jesus Christ. That is why when the people ask for this food, Jesus responds, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. That is what the signs of walking on water and feeding the 5,000 pointed to, the bread of heaven. They were not in and of themselves what the people were to feed on. They were signs that pointed to God, which led the people to seek and to find God. It can be easy to feed off the signs, but that will not feed the spiritual hunger which you possess. That hunger will only be filled by Jesus himself, the true bread of life. Sparks continues, too often we forget how to pursue what really matters. We are accustomed to inviting people into the community of faith for all the wrong reasons, for the right kind of worship, for political engagement on behalf of the poor and the downtrodden, for the sake of a Christian America, for a strong youth and family ministry, for the opportunity to practice mission in a downtown location. Yet what we have to offer in Christ and by Christ and because of Christ, first and foremost, is soul food which lasts forever and does not change with the changing circumstances of the church or the world. It is soul food that we desire and soul food in which we will rejoice long after our bellies are full of rice. We North American Christians have preached a broken, truncated gospel we have been good marketers rather than true witnesses. We have bought into a culture that rewards consumers and addresses their needs 
instead of proclaiming a gospel that offers us faith in the only begotten Son, who gave his life for the sins of the world, and who is lifted up so that all who believe in him have everlasting life. He is the bread of life. Those who come to him will never be hungry, and those who put their trust in him will never thirst. And so we come this afternoon to this virtual table to receive the sacrament that Christ instituted on our behalf. This is a time when we affirm that God feeds us continually with the bread of life. A past version of our, of our denomination's book of order stated that Christ himself is the host at his table and that Christ himself is fully present and received in the supper. In other words, Christ has invited us today to this feast so that our souls might be filled, not just our bellies. Christ is our host today, not just the one who performs miraculous acts which amaze us. Christ is the source of our thanksgiving today, for it is through him that God has given us new life. May our thanksgiving and gratitude be offered to the bread of life, who nourishes not just our bellies, but most importantly, nourishes our souls. To God be the glory, now and forever. Amen. In response to God's word, I would invite us tonight to declare our faith. And today we are going to use this passage from the first chapter of Colossians. Please join with me. Jesus Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. In him, all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn of the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. Amen. Come now to a time before we share in this feast which our Lord has set before us, we also lift up our prayers for ourselves, for others, for our world. Um, let me share with you first some prayer concerns and joys that I'm aware of, and then invite you to unmute yourself and share any that we might hold them in our prayers. We continue to remember Shirley Griffith, um, who had hip replacement surgery back in June, um, but her recovery has been a little slower than anticipated. And so Greg and Shirley ask for your ongoing prayers for them and for her that her, her recovery will be, will be complete uh, and full. Uh, Becky Burmester had asked this week that we continue to hold in our prayers, Joanne and Rick Giglio, uh, as Rick recovers from pneumonia and sepsis. He now is at Wake Med Intensive Rehab for the next four weeks and would ask for prayers for him that that time would be, uh, would be beneficial in his healing and, and strengthening. Um, Susan Smith asks us to remember in our prayers the family of Janice Perry, who was a co-worker of Susan's at the hospital for over 29 years, and Janice died last Sunday after a bout with cancer, and she asked especially that we hold in our prayers her son, Janice's son, and all of those who are mourning her death. We remember this week as well um, the Kairos Prison Ministry. Uh, that Verna Wentz and others are involved in. They will actually be at, at Western Boulevard on Thursday evening for part of that ministry that they do with the male prisoners at Central Prison. Um, so we hold them in our prayers as they undergo that ministry this week. And we hold in our prayers all of those who are going to be impacted 
um, along the southeast coast, including the Carolina coast and, and in our state um, from the tropical storm and the hurricane that is coming up the coast. I joked this morning, I said they spelled the name wrong, um, but I'm not going to say the name because I, I'm connected to someone whose name has that same name. So I'm not, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna make any implications about a, a storm named Debbie. I, I don't wanna get into any, um, I don't wanna get into rough water there. Oh my God. <laughs> um, I can't, I just wanted to request prayer for, for my, my uh, right leg and foot. Um, that I get feeling back in them. Amy, we will we will hold you in prayer for the neuropathy that you're dealing with, and that you'll receive that you will get feeling back in those in those limbs. Thank you. Are there others? My is surgery tomorrow at two thirty. For any time to remove the uterine masses, and uh, just lift her up. She is uh, she's not doing not doing great. Okay. Um, emotionally or or physically. So just please remember her. And we will. May God's peace be upon her. Excuse me. Excuse me. When you say her name again, I couldn't. I didn't catch the name of the person who's having surgery. Oh, we just lost Holly. I think she was having some. Oh, there she comes. She's having some connection issues. Holly, are you there? Yep, yeah, gone. I'm back again. Her name is Barbara Scott. Barbara. Barbara Thank Scott. you. We will hold Barbara in our You're prayer. Welcome. She has surgery surgery tomorrow um and prayers that that is is that all goes well and is successful thank you are there others we will hold and lift all of these well, well, I, I, well I, I don't want to be greedy but i have a, another request from <laughs> for my family sure. so if, this, this is for me this is for my sister my sister um she well she has frozen joints but um so so that's been a problem mm. so well, well actually the, 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 it's, got, it's gotten to the point where um she can no longer um i'm sorry i'm gonna try not to uh she she can no longer stand pull herself up she she has she she she's stuck in a chair all day long she's like stuck in bed all day long because she cannot she has frozen joints mm. and uh, it's got it's gotten to the point where um she needs uh, constant care, mm. and this is and and, and it, it, it she 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 has declined rapidly because, and so just um yes so that um I I I'm going to ask for specifically because she has multiple problems but yeah. I guess just g generally just help for her and her children who are taking care of her and so it's really hard on them. I, I because they're having to provide personal care for their mother yeah and you know there are some things that are difficult you understand but anyway amy what is her name her name is kathy kathy and her, her children's names are Catherine and michael okay thank you we will, thank you so much <laughs> absolutely we will surround kathy in our prayers and also surround Catherine and Michael as they seek the best care for her um, during this difficult time. Thank you. We will hold them in prayer. Hmm. Well, let's hold all of these in our prayers, not just today, but in the days and the weeks to come and ask for God's presence uh, to be truly present uh, in their lives to provide healing and wholeness and comfort and peace. Jesus said, come to me. All you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This table that we gather at is the Lord's table. Our Savior invites all who trust and believe in him to share in this feast 
which he has prepared. May the Lord be with you, also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. And praise to you for the gift of this holy meal. On the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus took bread. After giving thanks to God, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you, for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. With this bread and this cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast, grace our table with your presence, Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. With all your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun, moon, and stars, we praise you, O God, blessed and holy trinity now and forever. Amen. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branches. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. In Thanksgiving for this meal, I would invite us to close by sharing together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Van, take us out. Our closing number is a brief excerpt of a hymn titled Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. It's quite popular. It's written by William Williams. And Peter Williams actually has been um, given credit for translating this piece. And uh, I'll forewarn everybody, it doesn't sound like a hymn, but the text is not thought appropriate for today. Thank you. Guide me, O thou great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty.
Friends, as you go from this place, know that God is with you in all times, in all places, in all circumstances. And you have before you what you need for strength. And that is to feed on the love that God sent us in Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. So may you feel strengthened by that nourishing love. And may the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each of you now and forever. Amen. 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 Great to have all of you together tonight. We'll gather next Sunday at 5 o'clock at the church for our poetry and praise service. We will record it and put it on YouTube if you're not able to join us in person. Have a great week. Be safe and be well. Amen. Have a good week. You too, everybody. Take care. Amen.